you follow me on Twitter or on Instagram, you know something has been going on for the past week. And it is not pretty. If you're wondering why, Lindsay, your face looks gross. It looks fat. That's because I had a very bad experience with the dentist last week. That is what this video is about and why I have been MIA for the past week and haven't made any videos or anything. And if you hear a noise, my cat is playing with a receipt and we try to get it out of the room for this video, but the cat kept biting everyone. And I don't know why it's, it's biting everyone, I don't know why it's doing that. But um, it's really hyper right now and it won't get out of the room. About last Saturday, I started getting a really bad toothache pain up here and it was the regular pain that I usually get for um, when a nerve dies in my tooth and my tooth starts you know dying to where I have to go to the dentist now or this is gonna get bad so um, around Sunday Monday it was pretty bad it got really bad so Tuesday morning my mom called the dentist and she told them that I was having the pain and I had to be there at about 8.15. So I was there, I went to the dentist. Come to find out my tooth was dying, obviously. Um, so he did a root canal. Now I've had two other root canals with this guy, one up here, one down here, and they were completely fine, healed perfectly fine. And I could chew within a couple of days and it was fine like it didn't hurt at all so I was like okay whatever I'll get a root canal now before you even say anything they recommend you to go to the dentist while you're pregnant they Novocaine does not even go into your bloodstream at all so it's not gonna hurt the baby getting numbed for a root canal and them doing tooth whatever is not gonna hurt my baby so I know I was safe going to the dentist and I knew, uh, the dentist, you know, knows how to protect you from, you know, anything. They do take x-rays of your mouth, but they even like, they focus up here on your face, but they still put a guard over me just in case the radiation, you know, but the radiation was nowhere near my stomach at all. It was in my face and they still put a like metal shield or whatever over my stomach. So I was completely fine before you even say any comments about going to the dentist when you're pregnant. It is very safe and it is very recommended when you are pregnant because your teeth actually start to, you know, kind of get more toothaches and stuff while you're pregnant. But especially with Brayden, my teeth got horrible after Brayden. When back to school, I had class at about 150. Right before I went to school, my mom said, wow, Lindsay, your, your face is kind of swelling. So it, it was just a little, a really little, like, it was visible, but it wasn't swelling of my face. And my face was still numb, so I didn't think about anything. My face was still numb going to school, but, you know, I wasn't going to miss class because I only had two classes that day. So I went to school, went to class, um, my cheek was still numb, it was very swollen, it was not very swollen, but it was swollen when I went to class. And then after class, I didn't have another class until 6. So my class ended at 3 and I had time to eat and everything before my next class. So I went to go eat at Shepherd and I noticed that my face was getting more and more swollen. So I took a picture and I sent it to my mom. I said, I'm really swollen. And she said, that's not normal. So she called the dentist and the dentist told me to leave school and come get it checked out. So he... I left school, didn't go to my second class, and I went to the dentist. When I got there, he ran a laser light over my cheek and inside of my mouth, which I have no idea what the heck that does. I really do not know what that is and why he did that. But he said that the light would help the swelling and the swelling would be gone by tomorrow morning. Well, my face got worse and worse and worse throughout the day. Um, I went to sleep around 9 because I was really tired with, and I went to sleep with Brayden. And my mom came in to bring me my books at about midnight 
and I woke up at midnight and I went to go to the bathroom and I looked in the mirror and my face was huge like it was like a big mass is on my face like I had a tumor or something and I was like what the heck so I took a picture and I put it on Instagram and a lot of people were saying Lindsay you have an infection um, it can go to your brain you need to get that check that check that out it can cause eye damage all that stuff and I told my mom that and she said we'll just wait till we go to the dentist so we went to the dentist the next morning which was Wednesday morning at about 8 o'clock again and he ran the light over it again and said it's normal it's completely normal by that time my face had doubled in size and it had reached my eye I had about two bags of swollen nothing like mass there under my eye and he still said Lindsay it's normal just um, go home and put heat on it and just rest so I came home around noon and I laid down and put a heating pad on my face and I left it on there for about 20 minutes and my mom said, you know, you need to keep that, you need to keep it on for about 15 more minutes. Or you need to keep it on for a maximum of 20 minutes, and then we have to take it off. So it doesn't, you know, burn my face or whatever. So she takes it off, and my face had doubled in size since I got home and put the heating pad on. So it was like the heat was making my face completely worse. So my mom was like, that's it, the dentist isn't doing anything. I need to call your OB. Plus, the reason why, another thing, they, he gave me 2,000 milligrams of antibiotics, and that was way too much. I think I was taking way too much antibiotics, and plus it wasn't even helping, and neither was the heat. So my mom called my OB. My OB nurse was yelling at her on the phone, you need to get her to the closest emergency room right now. That's the, she has an infection in her face. It can go to her brain. It's so close to her brain. It can get in her bloodstream. It can kill her. You need to get her to the emergency room right now which is exactly what people were telling me on Instagram but my mom and I told my mom that and we just didn't listen so I was in so much pain went to the Winchester Medical Center around one o'clock when I got there um, the, I got I just got an IV which um, sucked because they had to stick me three times before they got an IV because I was so dehydrated because I hadn't been able to eat or drink anything because my face was so swollen and I have the battle scars I can't see them um, <laughs> that little big bruising right there um, then I had one right there and then I have one right there and that's where they finally got it so I got an IV got blood taken and everything and then a doctor came in and he said that is completely not normal at all my face is getting bigger and bigger by the minute so a oral surgeon came in and looked at my face and told me that we have to I have to stay overnight I was getting admitted for two days and I had to stay overnight and they were gonna see about draining my face just making you know an incision and just draining my face um, I got a CAT scan, which again was fine. I was completely, you know, protected. I had metal shield and plus the CAT scan only went like down to here. So it just, you know, measured my face. The CAT scan said I had no abscess. It was just kind of like a swollen mass. I had cellulitis. That's what it was called on my face. And it was just completely gross. So I got a CAT scan and he said, we need to keep you for a couple of days. It's not an abscess yet, but we might have to drain your face just so the swollen will go away. Later that night, the doctor came back in after I had been admitted and said, I'm getting surgery the next day. At 6 in the morning, he was going to come check my face and if it got any worse, they were definitely going to do surgery. So I finally got a room and the pediatrician um, wing of the hospital and he didn't come at 6 in the morning they had to come actually later but he came later around 8 9 and he said we are definitely pulling the tooth and if we pull the tooth and we find there's more you know infection and drainage we're going to drain your drain all the infection out they said they'll be back he said he'll be back by lunchtime or after his dental hours because he is a 
you know, dentist. He has his own office hours, but he did come to the hospital just for to help me. So around 12:15, the nurse came in and said that they were taking me down for surgery. When I got down there, my this IV blew. So they had to stick me again right here. And then I finally had to get an IV in my hand right there. Uh, they put me fully to sleep. He, well, he, they were telling me we have to put you fully to sleep. Surgery went pretty badly. Um, I, he gave me pain medication right before they took me back to the operating room and it made me really nauseous. Like really, really, really nauseous. I actually threw up before they put me to sleep. Then they laid me, they moved me from my regular bed to my, to the operating table. And then they put an oxygen mask on me, which it was scary because they put it on and they put it on really, really tight and I felt like I was suffocating. Like it, I felt like the, there was no oxygen coming through it at all. I couldn't breathe, nothing. And then he said, I'm going to put this in your IV and you're going to feel a little pinch or a little, you know, pain and then you're going to be asleep. Um, it was not a little pinch, it was not a little bit of pain, it was a lot of pain and a lot of pinching and I grabbed the side of the bed and I'm sitting there crying because it hurt so bad on my hand because I had just got this IV and you're already putting something through it, that tape that feels like somebody is, you know, stabbing me all over my body, that's what it felt like. And then the next thing I know after I grab the bed and I'm crying and the nurse is like, sitting there, you know, calming me down, um, the next thing I know, I'm asleep. The next thing I know, they were waking me up because I, they were done the surgery, and I started flailing my arms and flailing my head, and I don't know why I did that, but I just did, and I started freaking out, and they couldn't take me to recovery until I calmed down. So finally I calmed down, they took me to recovery and when they got when I got there my heartbeat was up to like a hundred over a hundred and sixty. So they had to, you know, calm my heartbeat down because I was freaking out so bad. And then um it went down to one twenty and then it went down to ninety nine and then I was fine and I woke up fully and my nurse was a sweetheart. My nurse gave me pain medicine and kept me company and then called my mom and told me that they just had a couple of problems with my heart rate and that it got really high but I was going to be up to the room in about 30 minutes. So they took me up to my room and Alex was there the whole time by the way. Alex was there because you know I was in surgery and he was there the whole time with me and my mom and finally I went up to surgery. They put a gauze in my mouth because of you know, like the blood, to stop up the blood and all that. But my mouth was drooling so bad and it was wetting the gauze and it was irritating it even more. So I kept, like I was so out of it that I kept clawing at my face to get the gauze out of my face or out of my mouth. And finally the nurse said, you know, it's okay, you can take it out. So I took it out and my gum was immediately like fine. I did not feel any pain at all. Eventually I did feel pain. I had to get pain medication. I started feeling relief on my face with the swelling within a couple of hours. I got my surgery Thursday, but I didn't get out until yesterday, which was Saturday. I stayed for four days, um, plus I the infection was started to go to my bloodstream, so I'm, I still feel kind of flu-y and sick, and that's why they kept me after surgery so long. The day after my surgery I slept all day. I slept about 20 something hours. Um, and then the day after that I was I slept until about noon, 1.30, something like that. And then finally I got out at about 2.30. They let me go. Took my IV out and I was discharged. So my face has gone down much, much more since I've been out of the hospital. Now, what I'm doing, uh, they did have to drain my face. They did pull my tooth and they did have to drain. Either it, 
it became an abscess and they had to drain it. Um, so I have no tooth back there. Thank God it's a back tooth. Above that, I have an incision right above my gum where they, you know, drain my face and there's stitches in there. So they're the stitches that dissolve after like two weeks or something. So it is kind of painful and I don't chew on that side. I don't get anything over there because uh, I'm scared I'm going to get dry socket or it's going to start hurting because I got food in there. I just, I'm, I'm really cautious about getting food over there or getting dry socket or anything like that. Plus, if I chew too much, I get really worn out and I start getting really, really sick and I feel really run down. So I try not to eat a lot. I actually ate nothing but yogurt, ice cream, and mashed potatoes for the past four days, or past five days, pretty much. And it just was horrible. And I drank nothing but water. So, because uh, the air, apparently the air bubbles in soda can help, can help with dry socket too. I can't drink out of a straw or a bottle. I have to drink out of a cup. So, yeah. That's how my surgery went and that's why I've been missing in action. And that is why my face is kind of swollen. Um, this is the side. I look normal now, but you can tell there's still swelling just by this line. When I smile, there's still swelling. It actually went from like over here and it moved to the back of my neck and all the way up to my forehead like above right there and all the way over to the end of my mouth that's how much it swelled and that's how much the infection spread so that is all about my surgery and if you have any questions or any concerns or anything you want to complain about or anything like that um just comment below oh i forgot something um if you're wondering where Brayden has been the whole time and if Brayden was, you know, taken care of, my dad actually watched him until about 4 o'clock on Wednesday when I went to the hospital. I was at the hospital at 1 and my dad watched him the whole time until 4 and then Jared's mom came and picked Brayden up and Brayden has been there ever since Wednesday and he is coming home today with mommy at about 6.30 so I will see him and I'll have time to rest before he comes home. And another thing, I have been on nothing but fluid antibiotics and, um, or liquid antibiotics and fluid and all that stuff and it kind of, um, formed a yeast infection and it's so gross. I know that's really gross and you probably like, ew, Lindsay, I don't know that, but I got a yeast infection and why I'm telling you that is because I had to take, they had to take my urine for, to check for a yeast infection. I don't know why, I really don't. If you can tell me why they took my urine to do a yeast infection, then there you go. While they were checking for the yeast infection, they found bacteria in my um, urine and found out that I have another, yet another, urinary tract infection. So apparently, they I have chronic UTIs with pregnancy because I had the same thing with Brayden. And I'm having the same thing already with this one. So I have another urinary tract infection and that is just... Horrible. I don't know why I keep getting these things, but I'm taking antibiotics now and I'm on yeast infection medicine. And yeah, that's it. Uh, I will see you guys for my next video. Bye. Cat, you're going to get on my nerves. Here, let me throw something in. Maybe that'll stop it. Okay.